Australia, or as the locals call it, Australia, the land of the convicts, the blast, and the Kiwi haters. Today I'm going to be talking about the three main myths that most people occur to resemble in Australia. And I'm going to be answering for you. So the first one's the deadly animals, the nation built of convicts, and the so-called desert wasteland. These myths are generally assumptions that can be made from what you hear through social media and other forms of interaction with people. <coughs> so contrary to popular belief, the deadly animals in Australia is what, oh, oh yeah, is what main people talk about. Um, Australia has contains the ten out of the top ten deadliest animals in the world. We have we have three. This is including the most dangerous bird in the world, the cassowary. Um, and then we have out of the top three snakes, out of the top five, we have the first three. Um, and then the mighty, and then the other one in the top ten is a saltwater crocodile. These animals either live in country New South Wales or in the Northern Territory, which is very diverse and there's not much out there. So for tourists, it's not really a spot you'll be visiting anyway. Um, so all these animals, um, a quote from Steve Irwin is, all these animals in my backyard known as Australia just need some loving, mate. If you go up, there, if you go up to them with your phone or aggressive bloody oath, they will attack you. Just give them some loving and respect and see what happens. Most of the time in Australia, people get confused about our animals as we are known to have the, one of the deadliest animals around. And the thing is, is coming from there is all you, all you have to do is when they feel aggress when they feel like you're being aggressive with them, then they will attack. But if you're nice and friendly, then there's still a chance that they might. But as long as you are happy with them, then you should be fine. The statistics for this is that According to the stats, the 266 humans in Australia have died in the past nine years. Removing the first category is horse, horses, cows and mammals um, from riding and farming, it brings it down to 189 deaths, which in nine years isn't that much to apparently have the deadliest animals in the world. Um, in fact, you have more chance of falling off a horse and dying because falling off a horse and dying or uh, farming with cattle than you do actually being bitten, eaten, or stung by an Aussie animal. The next topic is a nation built of convicts. They say that, people say that we start off as a nation full of convicts and we are criminals and because we act different to others. I understand that, yes, we are, majority came from England, but also what people don't know is that there's also German, Germany colonised there as well. So, and the convicts were, the, they, they were prisoners that run from England, and they could, they, they're basically their prison sentence could be for, for murder, stealing, like sexual abuse, or an argument towards this is that back then, for just as little as stealing a loaf of bread to survive for your family in the 17 in 1780 to 1800s was something to get you thrown in jail. The reason why we got the first fleet happened was because there were the in, the the prisons were overrun and. There was basically, you're dying if you went to prison as you weren't getting enough food and it was too overpopulated. So what I like about this is that 71% of the people in Australia identify as having an English or German ancestry. Um, we are very multicultural and have approximately 6, 6 million mi um, migrants, the majority of which identify as European or Asian. Um, and yeah, and then my favourite story from, I, what I have to take about this with the convicts is that it also opened a fresh start and a good opportunity. So not all people that were on the first fleet were convicts. Some people just wanted to get out of England as it was a rough time with the war. So my favorite story is James Squire, who was a convict. Um, he originally stole medicine for his wife and he got sent on the first fleet. He then got caught stealing barley um, in a farm in Australia and got sentenced to 150 years in prison or the death sentence. He, he chose a death sentence and just with his charm and his Australian way of being a convict, he ended up giving the judge two barrels of his beer and got his sentence shortened from 150 years to three years. Um, and with that, we now still drink the beer. It's called the James Squire 150 Lashes, so 150 years in prison is what he was sentenced to. So with this, basically, he, he although he did was a con man and did basically persuade the judge, he had a fresh start in the end, and that's how most comics now, we are not known as a place that is run down. We do have a great cities. And my last point is the, the, the views of a desert wasteland. 
So arriving at Heston College, the baseball team thought that I came from a large desert and nothing spontaneous was there. Through so Movies Based in Australia, they are filmed in the Northern Territory, which is basically almost the heart of Australia, and there is basically nothing out there. One of the most famous movies is Mad Max, which I'm not sure if you guys know, but it's uh, basically a very big action movie that occurs on one main strip in the desert, in the desert out there. Um, according to Professor Franklin, uh, Professor Franklin from the University of Adelaide, living in the centre of Australia is almost impossible and sourcing food and water can almost never be, fun, never be resourced or provided. And, according to, and on top of that, according to the Bureau of the Meteorology, so the bomb, the average heat during summer is 134 degrees and during winter the average is still 110 degrees. So it's very dry and really, it's, can you imagine, nothing would be hard to harvest out there. Um, answering this though, um, 83% of the population live by the coast. This is include. This is so basically the heart is Melbourne, Sydney, Gold Coast, and Adelaide, which is where I'm from, and we live within 50 to 100 kilometres of the coast in urban or built-up cities. Tourists come to Gold Coast, Sydney, and basically well-known places like that. Um, in summary of this, of these myths, between the deadly animals, convict nature, and the desert waste, and there's a lot of people that just don't understand the true potential of what Australia <laughs> is. A good, a good representation of this is Steve Irwin, who everyone knows, because it's Steve Irwin. Um, he lived his life in the outback with the animals, called the Crocodile Den his home, so there's the deadly animals as well. And even though he had, the, he had his funeral there, and, and he created something out of nothing, which is what all the convicts did to be able to survive. Um, I hope I change a few of your views about my beautiful country, and I'll leave you with a quote from the man himself, Steve Irwin. I'm a very proud Australian, I'm, I'm a proud Australian, and very, very proud. That is my citation.